mama leaving. Oh, the mama leaving. Yeah, you all better be good. Uh, she won't miss the party. You better not have no party at my house. Oh, she gonna miss the party. No party. It's great. No more parties. No parties. Love you. A shirt. Call me. That bet you got an iPhone in there, right? You can FaceTime me. FaceTime. Are you going to shop for me too? All right. <laughs> so I am finally leaving the airport. Q13. Q13. Come on, Q13. Show me what we got. Show me what we got. They put me in a big old car, they see I have little legs. I guess it's perfect for what I need, huh? So I'm on Q13, Queen 13 over here. My rental car, 32nd Street in Phoenix, Arizona. Okay, help me get that Google directions. Start location, bam. Um, bam. My location. Come on, get me home. Oh, I'm nine minutes away. Well, that's perfect, darling, because I'm nine minutes tired. Okay, I'm falling down the stairs. Hello, hello. I made it. This video is really just to me. From me. <laughs> Maybe to any of my reflections that are wanting to rewrite their own program. Today, I just arrived. It's really, really late. It was probably about 2 o'clock in the morning. And I'm just getting in my room. I just arrived to Arizona. This is a state where I'm about to move to. And I just checked into my room about to get me some rest but today has been awesome today has been awesome and what i've learned in my journey is that we are merely going through stages in life just like in the biblical text everything is a this is a stage the disciples was just different stages the becoming of the christ conscious one was just stages being um crucified and resurrected is a stage that we all are going through in our journey and so this stage that i'm going through right now is me letting my mind work for me instead of me doing everything myself in the physical because i'm a doer i'm a worker so right now my website is closed <laughs> i'm transitioning to move and i'm doing other things in my life in an effort to put me first but when i say doing i'm not saying physically doing i'm allowing the universe to make way for me physically i traveled here but the doing of this i had nothing to do with this i just had to show up 
And so I'm happy about that. I'm happy about where I am in my journey where I don't have to be such a hard worker, you know, because like it's crazy how we, um, especially black people, you know, we don't want to be called lazy. We want to show and prove, but oftentimes in the physical reality, we can get tricked. And we could end up working harder than any other person, working extra hard. And all of that work brings on stress and mental fatigue and drain our physical body. And in my journey, my thing is I don't want to have my children or even myself to do the same thing that I saw the, the ones before me do. I like to break generational curses. I've broken some in my family by the way that I think, by the way that I eat. And even my thought process of generational wealth that is before me, you know, even moving from where everybody in the family was. No, everybody just afraid to get out, you know. And so when Katrina, I live in the South, so when Katrina hit, actually that was really my first time actually exploring other places. And we only evacuated to Lafayette, Louisiana, which was only a couple of hours further I'm not but ever since that moment just getting out that one time I began to get inquisitive to go other places and to travel with my family and show them different things and so now I'm at a place in my journey where it's like you know what I realized that nobody in the family never left nobody in the family ever ever explored the world the world is so beautiful and I wanted to be the one to do that with my children and then to be different so this is where we're going to be calling home real soon and i'm not doing this I'm, I'm 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 imagining this this is all a mental game that i'm sharing with you i'm imagining it when i am in louisiana all i could see is these mountain tops all I could feel, feel is extremely dry heat instead of the humidity. I see myself already in the house. Everybody back home in Louisiana are helping me to get the house. Tomorrow, actually my neighbor hooked me up with a realtor out here. And tomorrow me and the realtor going to look at some houses that I had, you know, was scrolling through online that I like. So we go and see that. I'm going to be out here for a little while. And I'm just so happy that I'm here. I just wanted to do a video to let y'all know what I've been doing while my website is closed. I, I wasn't just twiddling my fingers. I was in my mind creating my reality through the law of assumption. Assuming the end already. <laughs> and it's a beautiful thing. When you can control your mind, when you can get your mind to do work for you instead of you physically doing it. I did that a long time, for a long time, and, and I want to try something different. And so here I am, allowing the universe to yield to me something different. You know, <laughs> when you get your mind to into the law of assumption, let me tell you, whatever it is that you're thinking of, People would just come up to you and begin to say, hey, you need to go to Arizona. Hey, I have a realtor in Arizona I can hook you up with. Hey, I got this, this discount on this flight to Arizona. You want it? Hey, I know somebody at the rental car <laughs> place in Arizona. <laughs> Unbelievable is what I'm saying here. Unbelievable. Blessing after blessing after blessing. And so... Um, I told one of my girlfriends, but normally um, what I would say when you practice in the law of assumption, don't tell nobody. Because just like we go through different stages, you know, just how like Jesus had that um, that doubt in Thomas and the one that betray betrayed Christ. Was that Peter? Anyway, so just like Jesus had those disciples, plus when he healed the people, he would say to them, go tell no one don't tell nobody when you have something going on with your law of assumption you know why i'm telling y'all by the time y'all see this it's gonna be done <laughs> but the reason why you don't tell nobody 
is because really every one of you pushed out. So you might have a little doubt up in your mind somewhere. And so then you gonna send you your reflection to you to tell you about that doubt, doubt. and it'll be like something like, but well, why you want to move out there? You know, you know, X, Y, Z. You know they come up with the most negative thing to throw in there. This is why the Christ anointed one said, "Go tell no one," because <laughs> that. It's actually coming from your subconscious mind. <laughs> that reflection that told you that is coming from your subconscious mind. And you might not be able to handle it. Your faith might be a little shaky. <laughs> so right now none of my reflections can tell me. Besides my one girlfriend that I thought about can tell me nothing bad but I only talk to her because she's someone that speaks life and only could see the good she's a high frequency one and so do, just don't tell nobody don't tell nobody until you are comfortable where you have it in momentum where you can already where you know it is done it is finished so just like with this video when I post it it is finished anybody that won't say something in the comments about their negative thought of Phoenix or Scotland or, or Chandler or wherever out here, uh-uh. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Too late. <laughs> it is done. That's going to be my reply. Too late. It is done. Doubting Thomas. And so you don't want to have anybody messing with your faith is all I'm saying. You you have to have that, that, that faith where you already saw, you already let it in and you're milking it already. This same particular girlfriend, she told me when, when I told her, she was like, oh, oh you going out there to, um, where they, um, you going out there waiting to exhale, where they did the waiting to exhale movie. And I hadn't even remembered that. And I was like, oh, you are so right now. First I laughed because she is a TV watcher. And I was like, girl, you watch too much TV. And anyway, I was like, I'm going to go and watch that movie. So yesterday, I watch Wait Until Exhale and I'm not out here here because of no man or nothing. This is far greater than a man. <laughs> anyway, I watched the movie and the ladies in the movie, you know, they had issues. Or better yet, they were going through different stages in their journey. <laughs> Just like the disciples in the biblical text. So you might better could relate to this here when I say, remember the lady, look at him, Robin. I forget these actors' names. I don't watch much TV, but the little, the little pretty, little cute one, um, that ended up having a being pregnant by the man that came over with the leather jacket and the heat, and she threw an orange at his head or whatever, and told him to go. You know, as a woman, you can relate to those women, those four women, at their stages. You know, I can remember in my journey. <laughs> I never got pregnant by anybody that um, I told to go ahead but I can remember in my journey where I did look for love in all the wrong places that was a stage and um, Miss uh, Loretta Devine I think her name is so the older lady how she loved her, her son and put her son first so much and took care of the well-being of her child before her. I could remember that stage where I always felt, no, 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 uh-uh, I am a mother first. Even the part that Whitney used and played as the independent woman, that was me at one point in my journey. That's where I'm coming from, the workaholic woman. <laughs> it's work so hard. And it's still that working hard stems from from little girl issues that I had. That's my my deal. Always being a hard worker, so maybe daddy could come back home, you know. And then there was a lady that was married, and her husband um, is an Angela Angela Bassett, and her husband um, ended up leaving her for someone else. And she just wondered how she was going to make it. 
I'm sure some of us in the physical reality, we've been through that stage where how are we going to make it? When you give all of your years, maybe to a man, I've never done this year, but giving it all to my career. When I could have been putting that energy into me, into my mental, into my expansion, but I just wasn't ready yet. Everything is perfectly orchestrated by source energy, but what my point here in mentioning that movie is when I was watching it, I realized that those ladies too, they were going through stages. <laughs> So this is the stage I'm on. I'm on a stage of of becoming mentally like the um, Christ conscious one. You on both sides of the middle of the brain or being in use, being of use. Where my conscious and subconscious is, is in agreement. And when those two are in agreement, it is, <laughs> it attracts information or it gets me in better alignment to receive information from the superconscious. <laughs> and so th that's the stage that I'm on. And so, let me tell you this, and then I'm going to go to bed, because I got to take a bath and go to bed. And I got to get up early in the morning. And so when I was at that point, so this is how I've been doing it. I've just been, I've just been picturing the end, right? And then picturing the end, I see the mountains, I, I feel the heat, and I, 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 I go to the stores, and, and, I, and, and I love my home, and I'm in my home, and I'm making my products in my new home. But anyway, today... The day when I was going to the airport, I was walking, you know, they had so many people at the airport. I was walking through the little belts, and I just was looking at everybody, and I was like, everything's perfect. She's perfect. He's perfect. She's God. He's God. He's God. I love this. This is so beautiful. Even the little dog. He's a divine one. <laughs> the little boy, he's a divine one. They were the divine, perfect. I just saw the good. I looked at everybody as if they, that I was looking at them through the eyes of God. That they were God. They were only, they, had, they were going through their stage. They were having their own experience. It was so beautiful. So I'm going through this here line here, and then they sent me to my little, my gate, and then I end up walking side by side with a female. Um, pilot and I was like hi how are you and we talked a little bit and she asked me my name and um, I asked her hers and I was asking her if she loved her job I was like man that sounds so exciting because she was telling me where she was about to go and when I told her what flight I was on she was like oh my best friend is flying that um, that plane tonight and I was like oh okay cool she's like you're in good hands I was like okay cool I sit down and I'm still looking at everybody. I'm like, oh, this is perfect, perfect timing. The flight was early. You're perfect, you're perfect, you're beautiful. You're God, you're divine, blah, blah, blah. Good spirits, good energy, right? I get on the plane and y'all know I'm a little introverted person. I don't really like attention. <laughs> I don't, I do this out from my heart to bless somebody. I don't like attention at all. I get on the plane. And a passenger, when he welcomes everybody, he says, hello to everyone. And they said, ladies and gentlemen, he said, ladies and gentlemen, and he said my name. And he was like, you don't have to stand up, but I want everyone to know that you're flying here and you're a good friend of my friend. And he said, her, the, the pilot name that I was just talking to, and on behalf of such and such airlines, I want to welcome you here. Everyone say hello to me, you know? And so I'm, I'm waving my hand and people saying hello. But it made me feel so good. Not not the fact that the attention, because I don't like the attention, but it made me feel good because it was letting me know that I was in alignment, that I was in the perfect place at the 
perfect time. It was almost like the universe was calling my name on a loudspeaker in the airplane, right? So cool, so cool. Anyway, the flight was good. When I got off it, I had my rental call. And so I was at the airport for a couple of hours. <laughs> That's why it's so late. I was there trying to come with this man, Mr. Fred. Bless you, Mr. Fred. Mr. Fred got me a call. So I got my car and I got to get up early in the morning. But I just wanted to let you all know that we're all on a journey dealing with different stages. I'm just on perfect. I mean, I'm just on purpose trying to perfect my mental in order to get me into different stages that even my sisters and my nieces and nephews never experienced. I mean, they could remember, oh, oh, that was my auntie that broke the mold. If she can do it, I can do it. Little Billy O'Ha, you know, she was the one that was preaching at every family gathering about the things that we were eating. She was the one that was preaching to get back in alignment. She was the one that was constantly preaching. No, no, explore the universe. She was the one that was preaching that there is no separation. All is God. Anyway. Some, somebody go here. Somebody go here. And, and, and it, it don't necessarily have to be my family. It don't necessarily have to be my children. Maybe it's somebody out there. If I could just help one person. Baby, you got everything you need right here. You got all the love you need. You got the connection you need. You got the support you need. The universe is just waiting for you. To yield to it, to say I'm ready, that I, I'm, I surrender. I don't want to work hard no more. I want to work smart. <laughs> I want to renew my mind now. I finally get it. It's the renewing of the mind. <laughs> okay, I gotta go take a bath. Be blessed, babe. This video was from my heart to yours. Good night.